Good morning. It is impossible to overstate or to exaggerate the competitive advantages that China enjoys now in nuclear power and how transformative these advantages already are when it comes to real world breakthroughs and the challenges that this represents to everyone else if these trends continue. In conventional nuclear power, fission nuclear energy, these trends are already becoming pretty firmly established. And now, all of a sudden, it's becoming true in fusion power. To say this as simply as possible, China's staggering advantages in supply chain, in their diplomatic efforts for Belt and Road and BRICS, their dominant position in the manufacturing industries, their trade surpluses of billions of dollars every single day, we are already pretty close to putting the question to bed as to who is going to own the rest of this century. Without major changes and fast, it's probably going to be China. It's too late for anyone else. But what China is doing in nuclear power, in both nuclear fission and especially now with fusion, goes way beyond that. If they get that right, it'll be a Chinese millennium. And this table is the reason why. Nuclear fusion is called the holy grail of energy for these reasons. The fuel for nuclear fusion can come from the ocean. It burns clean, and the only byproduct is helium. There's no radioactive waste to handle and dispose of. There's no risk of a Chernobyl or a Fukushima-style reaction meltdown. The reactors can be put anywhere, and the energy creation is basically unlimited. One kilogram of fusion fuel is the energy equivalent of 55,000 barrels of oil, 10,000 tons of coal. And remember, the fuel can be seawater. Just bring a bucket to the beach. The world's nuclear industry is presently based on fission, which is on the right. A particle is fired into a large atom such as uranium. The atom blows apart and releases energy and forms smaller atoms too, which are waste. That's fission. Fusion is on the left, and it's fusing two particles together, and that releases energy also. But with fusion, it can be a self-sustaining reaction. The energy created is much more than what was put in. They illustrate the difference using an atomic bomb, which is fission power, versus the sun, which is fusion. So when we go through today the leaps that Chinese researchers have just achieved in fusion power, they're trying to recreate the power of the sun at scale. That's fusion. Headline here from last week is on oil price. They're a subscription service for the global fossil fuels industry, but this article hasn't been paywalled yet and you can still read it. China has just achieved first mover advantage in nuclear fusion. Two things here. First mover advantage is a very powerful concept in economics and in industry. And it means that it's the first entity to achieve production and application at scale and the competitive advantages that are conferred by that. Uh, good examples here are Uber, the first guys who really got the tech and the maps and the banking right for ride sharing. And so they became the standard. Uh, General Electric, who went all in on direct current, which wasn't even the best technology for electricity generation and transmission. But because they had first mover advantage, it was really hard to displace them with AC. Uh, Silicon Valley is another example, an ecosystem of companies that sprung up around Stanford University that focused on semiconductors. First mover advantage means that they can establish standards. They can set up university departments and research arms and venture capital firms and sustain that advantage for many, many years. China has just gotten there on fusion nuclear power. That's the first thing. The second question is why it showed up on oil price at all. Why do they have the story? And it's because if China can get fusion to work, the fossil fuels industry goes away. The coal industry goes away. Natural gas, natural gas is a fossil fuel by the way, it goes away, there's no need for it anymore. The entire fossil fuel based economy goes away and so for example, the value of Venezuela's oil reserves and Indonesia's coal reserves, they go to zero. So this is big news to oil price subscribers. 
The Europeans have a long-term project going called the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER. It's already way over budget. They're way late on promised delivery and testing schedules. But a Chinese company, Energy Singularity in Shanghai, just became the world's first company to build and operate a tokamak nuclear fusion reactor. The Chinese are focusing their efforts in nuclear fusion differently than we are in Europe and in the United States. China hopes to build much smaller reactors and build them much faster. That's been true in their fission reactors too. China can build conventional nuclear reactors much faster now compared to anyone else. And that's their aim here too with fusion nuclear energy. Energy Singularity uses high temperature superconducting materials that can reduce the size of China's fusion reactors to just one fiftieth, five zero times smaller. That also means they can build them faster in just three or four years instead of 30. And it's also critical to their national efforts that the materials and the tech need to be of Chinese origin. For their tokamak, 96% of the materials are sourced in China, and they own the patents and the IP. In the United States, we are theoretically doing some things similarly to the Chinese. There's a Massachusetts company working with MIT, and they also figured out that smaller is better. Their spark reactor is still not yet in the experimental phase, but it's going to be about 1 65th the size of Europe's project. How the U.S. is going about the development of the reactor, though, is different from China's. Commonwealth Fusion and MIT are working on heat energy pulses, whereas Energy Singularity began developing fusion plasma. The coverage from the South China Morning Post goes much more deeply into the science, and engineers will probably prefer them. Global experts agree that a new race has just begun. In mid-June, the superconducting tokamak device successfully generated the first plasma from a fusion reaction. Yasmin Andrew, the Imperial College of London physicist, says there are a few companies in the world trying to develop HTS, high temperature semiconducting, but Shanghai's HH70 was the first to get there. Their next step is a self-sustaining reaction with a Q value of 10 by 2027. What that means is they hope their reactor will generate 10 times more energy than it consumes. Andrew Holland is the CEO of the Fusion Industry Association. What he's saying here is like the oil price guys. China got first mover advantage now on the production side. Fusion will follow the pattern of the solar industry, whereby much of the technology was invented abroad, but manufacturing went to China who deployed it at scale. Scale is the important thing. Can it be done in large volumes at lower cost than anywhere else? He agrees very likely that China is already way ahead of integrating technology with application. First mover advantage also applies heavily in research. This is a comprehensive survey of China's nuclear power industry. And they explain that China is building out their university systems to support their research in fission and in fusion. They are training 1,000 new plasma scientists. Obviously, this is more easily achieved if they have some plasma to work with, and now Shanghai does. Remember that Silicon Valley boomed, along with Stanford and University of California together, as the world's top electrical engineering students went to the Bay Area to work with the most cutting edge companies. There was literally just one place to work if you wanted to go to the best universities for semiconductors or to work in the best companies that made them. And that's what's coming now for nuclear in China. If you're a physicist and China's got a fusion reactor to work on, you're coming to China, assuming you're not already here. Just like that, China went from having no nuclear industry at all to one that's one generation ahead. China is decades ahead of nuclear power. And the people saying this are the physicists themselves. And their research will produce more. They're leaders in that now, too. Theoretical physics becomes applied physics in the same building. Ms. Andrew of Imperial College, again, says that this breakthrough will lead to more as they've achieved proof of concept. 
this design works. The question of feasibility has been asked and answered. Shanghai's design may lead to stronger magnetic fields, smaller machines that are cheaper and faster to build. They compare again China's tokamak to the one in Europe, the ITER project, where 35 countries are involved. It's the world's largest fusion reactor, again 50 times bigger than the one in Shanghai. It uses low temperature instead of high. It's complicated to cool it down and it costs a fortune. Its high level of complexity and its cost and its enormous size all argue against large scale deployment of that kind of reactor. What's more, a lot of Chinese top scientists have been working on the ITER project and they have a deep pool of talent for fusion power. Star Taurus Fusion CEO says China has other big advantages strength of supply chain, large scale manufacturing, huge workforce, and policy support. Policy support is China's national level determination to make all of this go. Their top industry official says that the first electricity generated by fusion must come from China. And China aims to have the prototypes ready in 10 years and in large scale use by 2050. If China does achieve that widespread use by 2050 and the United States and Europe are closely behind, get there about the same time, it will be a very interesting economic and diplomatic landscape for the rest of the 21st century. But if China does get there and the US and Europe remain 20 years behind, the future is gonna be much less interesting. It's gonna be much more certain and wholly determined by the Chinese themselves. Just like the power stations built by General Electric marked the boundary between darkness and light, the difference between the companies and the cities and the countries that could be open only when the sun was shining and the weather was good, and the modern age, that's what will happen again. Fusion power at scale means the sun is always shining. The power of the sun everywhere, they've got one of those small tokamak reactors and it's China's plan to have hundreds of them just 25 years from now. That's how important this race is and why it's such a big problem that they're already so far ahead. This is Shanghai, the Bund. Be good.